Today's show is sponsored by the Dog Cancer Survival Guide, the best-selling book that helps you help your dog with cancer. Join the companion private support group at dogcancersupport.com and get the email newsletter at dogcancernews.com. It's not an uncommon thing for any dog to get a little bit of blood in their stool, but if there's other signs that go along with it, so if they're vomiting and they have the bloody stool, that's a bigger concern. If they're uncomfortable and they've got the bloody stool, if they're a gum color, we always use gum color as a really big warning sign. If they look like their gums by their teeth there, if, if they're normally bright pink and that animal is looking pale, white, or bluish, then that bloody stool becomes a much more significant finding than it might in a young puppy who's running around eating trash. Welcome to Dog Cancer Answers, where we help you help your dog with cancer. Here's your host, James Jacobson. Hello, friend, and welcome to Dog Cancer Answers. Today's topic is not for the squeamish, but it is one that many dog owners have encountered, and that is bloody stool. So gross. Yeah, I know. Hopefully, you'll never have to deal with this nasty mess. But if you do, just in case, we have consulted with Dr. Nancy Reese, a practicing veterinarian for over 30 years who has a master's degree in preventative veterinary medicine and a PhD in epidemiology. Joining us once again, thank you, Nancy. Thanks for being with us. Thank you once again. It's nice to see you again. It's great to have you back on the air. So let's turn our attention today to something that we don't like to talk about a lot, but bloody poop, especially bloody diarrhea. It's really, really upsetting. Why Why should I not panic or should I panic when I see that coming out of my dog's rear end? Yeah, that's. I like the way you put that. When should I panic or should I not panic? One of the first things I would say is that dogs do seem to get blood in their stool way more frequently than people do. So one episode of some blood in the stool, I tend not to worry about quite as much. That being said, when there's bloody diarrhea all over your house, mm. it becomes a bigger emergency, both for the dog's sake, as well as, you know, protecting your carpet. <laughs> so, I mean, is it, is, it, is it a good practice when you're outside using those poop bags to kind of really, you know, do a quick Quick, quick, quick evaluation of, of it. Is it a firm? Is it a solid? Or is it kind of diarrhea-ish? Or is it you know diarrhea with pools of little blood and mucus in it? Absolutely. Monitoring, for lack of a better um, topic or whatever, monitoring stool quality can be tremendously helpful. And I am so overly impressed that we have some people that can tell you, my dog poops twice a day. If they're this big. They're this color, this color quality or this, you know, softness. And it's super helpful to know that what they're seeing, if they see that bloody stool is so dramatically different from the normal. I'm guilty of that. I guess that would be more of a scatology thing, but I'm guilty of that because I really do care. <laughs> well, that, that's great because it, it's so much more information than when we get the other extreme mm. where people say, I don't know, he goes out in the woods and I don't see him. Uh. So we have no idea if this has been going on for six weeks and the owner finally caught it, or if this was truly a sudden change. And so being able to monitor with the, the poop bags and things is absolutely a wonderful thing to do. With that, a little bit of blood on the exterior of the stool is quite a different situation from a mushy blood clots you know, coming out with the stool. So the amount of blood makes a huge difference on that panic level. And so when should you call the vet when you see some blood in the stool? So it's, it's nice, again, from my personal point of view, the more information is always better. So I love it if people call and say, I found my dog's stool this morning, the first time, and there's a little bit of blood on it. I love to be able to have that information recorded in their chart and then tell them, okay, one time blood, a little bit, there was no straining, the dog feels great eating, no vomiting. I tell them usually, keep an eye on it. If it continues, then we'll start to panic. You're the best vet ever. I'm gonna, I can only imagine if I call my vet every time that I see that once. And, <laughs> but you, so you really do appreciate that. I mean, that, that's the I, information I absolutely that chart, do. you chart it. Now, I, I will say the front staff might have a little harder time with that because they're the <laughs> ones that are getting these excessive phone calls. 
<laughs> but the number of times that I have looked back in a record and said, oh, you reported this happening three weeks ago. And last year at the exact same time of year, you reported that also. So for me, that information is invaluable. And, you know, I sometimes, although email is not necessarily a great way to communicate because it's harder to keep in touch on emergency basis. But I also provide people with an email address so that they want to give me an update on their animal that is not emergency related. Again, I can take that note, put it in the chart. And I love having that information. So to me, the, the more the merrier. Do people snap pictures? Uh, yes. And I, it is funny because the number one picture that I get <laughs> from people is usually about poop. <laughs> you know? yeah, I love that. Okay. Okay. So, but in general, if you don't have as um, diligent a veterinarian as you are, when should you call your vet or bring your dog in when you see blood in the stool? So if there's a significant amount, so if you're seeing, you know, 20% of the stool covered, and that's just a rough number, but if you're seeing like a large pool of blood on that stool or with the stool, that's certainly a cause of concern. If it's little red specks that are on the outside, I don't worry about that too much. If it's more than one bowel movement that's had significant amount of blood, that raises the concern. If there's vomiting associated with the bloody diarrhea, that usually is a little bit worse. When they start to strain so hard, I mean, it's really hard to watch some of these poor dogs with diarrhea, but they will sit there and strain so hard that you'll just start to see pure drops of blood come out. Well, that, even if it's not a life-threatening situation, that's very uncomfortable for the dog. So that becomes a higher priority case. Yeah, I've had I've had those eyes, my dog looking at me like, this is so hard. You know, and, and, and you just feel, and you feel, for, I felt for my dog in those situations. Oh, I was going to say that that's actually a big thing we also see is that we get phone calls a lot where people think the dog is actually constipated mm. because they're out there straining and straining and not producing something or only usually seeing a little bit of blood. And I'd say the majority of the time the dog actually isn't constipated. It has just had such diarrhea and has been straining long enough that there's nothing left to come out. Got it. Now, it's not only red bloody stool that you're concerned about, but if you start to see other colors, right? Right, right. So dark black is another definitely concern that usually if there's bleeding higher up in the digestive tract, so say in the stomach, if you've got a bleeding ulcer, by the time that blood goes all the way through the intestines and out the colon and onto the stool, you're going to see more of a black color rather than that fresh blood. And that sometimes is indicates a slightly worse problem than just the fresh blood on top of the stool. The hardest thing is sometimes a really dark green stool can look black. So sometimes it takes, and this is you know one of the really joys of the job, is people will bring in a stool sample and, yes, with gloves, we will actually, you know, kind of paw through it to try to determine the color. And there's some specific tests you can send it out to detect whether it's blood or just really dark color. Okay, so would that also be a thing that, like, if you see this black several times, that's more of an issue? Or if you just see it once, it may actually be dark green? Right, yes. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, you're going to want to have it be more consistent yeah. in terms of whether you worry about it or not. And then, of course, this is somewhat impacted by I mean, what comes out as a function of partly what comes in. So if you're changing the dog's diet, that's when you can start to see these coloration changes and consistency changes in the, in the poop. Absolutely. I mean, that a classic example is you start to feed your dog carrots, and sometimes you actually see little orange flecks come out. And mm -hmm. obviously, that's not going to be a big concern because you know you put carrots in. So you know what comes in definitely does come out differently. And perhaps a day or two later, depending on how yes. much fiber is in it. <laughs> Let's pause right here and we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. I want to let you know about an important newsletter. It's called Dog Cancer News. Now with a name like that, it is not for everyone. But if your dog has cancer, you will want to subscribe. That's because every issue features articles that will be helpful, such as low carb dog cancer diet recipes, new clinical trials, financial resources to help pay for cancer care, information on supplements, and lots of other helpful info that your veterinarian may not know or have the time to share with you. 
Also, when you subscribe to Dog Cancer News, you will get a weekly update on the topics covered on this podcast, along with links and resources. So how much does Dog Cancer News cost? Well, today you can subscribe for free. It's our gift. For a limited time, you can get a full year subscription for free, no strings attached. Just go to this website to sign up for the newsletter now, dogcancernews.com. It takes less than 10 seconds to subscribe and it is totally free. Do it now at dogcancernews.com. Welcome back. Obviously, we're talking on this series mainly about cancer in general. So which cancers are most likely to cause bloody stool? Probably, I guess I would say the number one is going to be some type of rectal or colon tumor. That's going to be something that where there is a mass growing within the end part of the intestine and those can cause some bleeding or they can cause squeezing, uh, trying to really get the stool beyond that mass, they can strain so hard that there is blood showing up that might not directly be from the tumor, Hmm. but from the straining that the tumor causes. Other than rectal, what else? An anal gland tumor or something like that could cause bleeding. So it's not technically within the stool, but it's adding the blood Hmm. on its way out. I think those are probably going to be a mast cell internally. Like if there was a mast cell tumor within the stomach or the intestines, that could cause some potential bleeding. And then there's some other stomach cancers that they could get a mass in the stomach that could cause more of that dark, bloody type of thing. Is bloody diarrhea a common symptom of cancer? There's more common causes of bloody diarrhea than cancer. So don't think this is the horses and zebras thing. Don't, if you see it, it's not, oh, God, my dog has cancer. Exactly. Yeah, but definitely check it out. So is there anything that you can do at home that might help your dog if he has this? If it's something more minor, like you saw the dog get into the trash and then there was a little bit of bloody diarrhea afterwards, it might be something where don't feed them for 24 hours or 12 hours or start a bland diet. Simple bloody diarrheas might just be a matter of resting the digestive tract and then getting better. Bleeding tumor, so you're going to keep seeing blood coming out and there's really not a lot you could do at home for that. Okay. So if you do see this for a few days and it's of concern and you bring your dog into the vet, what is the vet likely to do both in terms of the tests? You know, clearly you talked about the paw test where you determine if it's black or green. That's, yeah. that must be one of the more favorite tests that you do, but are there <laughs> other tests and then how do you treat it? If the dog still looks pretty bright and alert mm-hmm. or if they're just a little bit off, I mean, the first thing is to rule out some of the more simple things like certain parasites. We see quite a bit of giardia in our area. I live in a rural area and there's lots of water sources and things. So giardia can frequently cause blood in the stool. So the first thing we might do is send the stool sample out for a giardia and parasite check because you find that great. You treat it and everything's everything's good. Uh, And that does bring up another point that when you do see bloody stool or bloody diarrhea, it's not pleasant, but if you can bring in a sample That's always helpful because trying to collect one at the clinic is not always the easiest thing to do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So first thing would be to send the stool out, check for parasites, eliminate that. After that, there might be some blood work to make sure that they're not having a bleeding disorder that could cause it. So something like rat poison, Mm. that could possibly cause at least the older types of warfarin-based rat poisons. That can do it. Or if they have a clotting abnormality, like they have a platelet disorder, and cancer could cause that as a side effect as well. So there might be some blood tests, there could be stool tests, and then finally there could be some imaging tests where either there's x-rays with some dye material or an ultrasound to look for ulcerative types of things or cancers, unfortunately. You mentioned you know bringing a stool sample in versus going to the vet and waiting for that to happen, which can be complicated. How fresh does your sample need to be? And should it be like refrigerated if it's hot? Or These are the probing questions that I ask. Yes, probing questions. I like that. Uh, the fresher, the better. Okay. So if you just find it, you know, a nice plastic baggie works very well. Mm-hmm. Double plastic bags is even better. <laughs> and if it has to be overnight, if it's, particularly if it's hot. I mean, mm-hmm. if it's hot, I'm sorry, but baked bloody stool is not the most pleasant thing to smell. So if you can put it in the refrigerator, if it's going to be several hours, 
that will mostly cut down on the odor. And it does actually help preserve parasite checks a little bit better. But the fresher, the better. Two-day-old stool is definitely not going to be very useful. Okay. What else do we need to understand about bloody stools? I guess one of the other big things is, again, it's it's not an uncommon thing for any dog to get a little bit of blood in their stool. But if there's other signs that go along with it, so if they're vomiting and they have the bloody stool, that's a bigger concern. If they're uncomfortable and they've got the bloody stool, if they're gum color, we always use gum color as a really big warning sign. If they look like their gums by their teeth there, if, if they're normally bright pink mm-hmm. and that animal is looking pale, white, or bluish, then that bloody stool becomes a much more significant finding than it might in a young puppy who's running around eating trash. Dr. Nancy Reese, you gave us all the poop on <clears throat> bloody poop. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us today. All right. And I hope you don't have too many opportunities to experience the bloody poop. Let's keep our fingers crossed, Dr. Nancy. Thank you. And and thank you, listener. Thank you for tuning in today. And I want to encourage you to follow Dog Cancer Answers in your favorite podcast app. And also remind you that you can ask Dr. Nancy or one of our other veterinary experts about your questions related to dog cancer. And you can do that by calling our listener line. We have a 24 hour a day, seven day a week telephone number where you can call and leave a message. That number is 808-868-3200. And just leave a question for one of our veterinarians and we will include it perhaps on a future episode of Dog Cancer Answers. If you have a dog with cancer, and why else would you be listening to this show? I want to encourage you to join our support group. You can find that at dogcancersupport.com. Type that into your browser and it will redirect you to our free dog cancer support private group on Facebook. That's at dogcancersupport.com. We also have a newsletter that you should know about. You can subscribe. It is free, just like the support group. And you can find that at dogcancernews.com. All the show notes for today and all the past episodes of Dog Cancer Answers are available on our website at dogcanceranswers.com. Again, I want to thank you for hitting the play button today. I'm James Jacobson, and from all of us here at Dog Podcast Network, I want to wish you and your dog a very warm aloha. Thank you for listening to Dog Cancer Answers. If you'd like to connect, please visit our website at dogcanceranswers.com or call our listener line at 808-868-3200. And here's a friendly reminder that you probably already know. This podcast is provided for informational and educational purposes only. It's not meant to take the place of the advice you receive from your dog's veterinarian. Only veterinarians who examine your dog can give you veterinary advice or diagnose your dog's medical condition. Your reliance on the information you hear on this podcast is solely at your own risk. If your dog has a specific health problem, contact your veterinarian. Also, please keep in mind that veterinary information can change rapidly. Therefore, some information may be out of date. Dog Cancer Answers is a presentation of Maui Media in association with Dog Podcast Network. 